I, I have to admit something right now. I have to fess up. I just, I just can't, I, I can't continue to do a podcast style thing without, I, I mean, and, and carry this burden without laying it down. And if you're listening to this right now, it gets laid down on you, mofo. I am so pissed off at Bernie Sanders, I could scream. I really am. I thought I was going to shit bricks yesterday when I saw him. <sighs> sign off to the Clinton campaign. Now, I know what he said. He said 80% of what we wanted is in the platform. And we also know, don't we, that a political party's platform It is not a binding agreement that a president has to follow by any means. The Republicans and the Democrats come up with these platforms every fucking four years. And what happens to the planks that are in the platform? I don't know. They catch fire and burn. Okay, well, then why was I making such a big deal last hour about the Republican platform this year? Well, there is a slight difference. This year, the head of the Republican Party is a psychopath, Donald Trump, who doesn't want to, has no fucking political ambitions whatsoever. He just wants to win. He wants to win so, so much winning, you're going to get sick of winning. I'm going to build a wall. But for the most part, except this year, on the Republican side, a political party's platform is more like, um, it's not even a roadmap. It's more like a, a suggestion. So the fact that Sanders says he got 80% of, of his demands inside the Democratic Party platform, you know what that means to me? Not a goddamn thing. Nothing. Nothing. I'm so disappointed about his endorsement. How could he do that? He knows. He fucking knows. He spent the past year displaying to the American public that he knows, like you do, like I do, how fucked up and corrupt the system is. Sanders knows it. He's been fighting against it for 30 years. So what does he do at the very end? Ah, uh, Senator, how could you do it? How the fuck can you do it and go home and sleep at night? So, yeah, I'm, uh, at first I thought I was heartbroken. Oh, oh, I'm heartbroken. But I'm not having a love affair with Bernie Sanders. I haven't slept with him. Oh, heartbroken my ass. I am furious. I feel fucking betrayed. When he endorsed Hillary Clinton, Kathy and I watched it together. And I thought she was going to pass out. Me, I felt like somebody took that fucking dagger and just went, shunk! Right into my back. How could you do that? There were so many options for Sanders. He could have challenged her at the convention. He could have taken Jill Stein's offer. She offered to step aside, not that she should, but step aside and let Sanders take the presidential slot on the, on, on the Green Party ticket. And at the same time, I, you know, I'm, I'm not. Th th this is the part that has me uh, wondering if I should get back in therapy. 
Um, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not pissed off at Bernie Sanders. I feel betrayed. Uh, I feel like the one clear chance, the one honest candidate, the one true American who is interested in little fucks like me, the one person who could have brought to the presidency for the first time in how many decades an honest broker, somebody who did and still does, I'm sure Bernie still does, believe in truth, in justice. When I say betrayed, I I guess I feel betrayed by myself. I should have known better. As long as I have been around, as, as, many, uh, uh, as much of this shit as I have seen and experienced firsthand and listened to and watched and tried to run away from and tried to run toward, I should have known that in the end, if Sanders didn't get the nomination, that in the end, He would throw in with the person he said was unqualified. What the fuck? How do you endorse somebody that a few months ago you said was unqualified? Because Sanders doesn't bullshit. He doesn't lie. He tells the truth. When he says that Hillary Clinton is unqualified to be president, I believe him. Not just because he said it, but because of my research on Senator Clinton that goes back eight goddamn years. Actually longer than that. So let me share with you what the World Socialist website, WSWS.org, you ever gone there? You should. They're hardcore, (laughs) but... I mean, some of the stuff they write is as embarrassing as some of the shit that I say on this, this podcast because I know I get real carried away. So does WSWS.org. Bernie Sanders ended his presidential campaign Tuesday not with a bang but a whimper. The Vermont senator formally endorsed his rival in an undignified prostration before the Democratic Party establishment and Wall Street's favored presidential candidate, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The unity rally featuring Sanders and Clinton in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, had all the spontaneity and enthusiasm of a going-out-of-business sale. The funereal atmosphere was perhaps fitting because with the demise of the Sanders campaign, the Democratic Party has demonstrated for the thousandth time its historical role as the graveyard of progressive movements and efforts to achieve reform through the capitalist two-party system. The Sanders campaign has provided a major lesson in politics to millions of young people and workers who rallied to support the Vermont senator because he called himself a democratic socialist, And because he denounced Wall Street and the domination of U.S. politics by, quote, millionaires and billionaires, end quote. The mass support for a self-proclaimed socialist shocked the U.S. ruling elite, the Democratic Party establishment, and no doubt Sanders himself. It demonstrated that despite decades of incessant media propaganda against socialism and communism, the experiences of masses of working people and youth are driving them to the left. This was particularly true among the younger generations. Sanders won by huge margins, 70, 80, even 90 percent among primary and caucus voters under 30 years of age. More than one and a half million people attended his rallies with college students and youth of college age predominating. The Sanders campaign did not create 
the broad radicalization demonstrated in these figures. The Vermont senator's bid for the Democratic Party nomination rather served to uncover what was already developing, the product of decades of deepening economic inequality, ceaseless war, attacks on democratic rights, and the growing realization that the profit system is leading mankind toward catastrophe. Once the Democratic Party campaign was fully engaged, however, Sanders' political task, in the eyes of the U.S. ruling elite, his political task became clear. It was his responsibility to put the genie back into the bottle. He had to deliver his millions of supporters, particularly the youth, to the candidate chosen by the Democratic Party establishment. 